Force Destiny, Chapter 7 Ray hadn't consciously decided to isolate herself from her friends, but as she wandered the corridors, she was drawn to the comfort of the few empty spaces left aboard. It was odd, this dichotomy that Ray suffered. There was no privacy, no seclusion, no place of her own to think. Being in close quarters with so many different energies crowding the force around her was new and exhausting. No matter where she went on the ship, there was someone else there too. It was suffocating how trapped and overwhelmed she felt by the constant presence of others. And yet, she felt achingly alone. The burdens she carried were heavy, but no one could ease them with acceptance. No one would understand. No one in the resistance, at any rate. Those dangerous thoughts that she couldn't share were proof of how alone she truly was. This cursed perdition of torment had no end in sight. She finally found solace in vacant turret and curled up in a corner, watching the open space flash past through the viewports. They will never understand me. How can I ever explain what happened? How can I explain that I went there to try to turn our enemy? How can I explain that he saved me but I still failed? How do I explain to them that we're connected? How do I explain this when I don't understand it myself? They will think of me as a fool, a traitor. They will never trust me. This is a path I have to walk alone. Closing her eyes, she could almost feel the dark, cold stream of overwhelming hatred surrounding him like a force field. She could almost see him, stalking down a dark corridor. A calm but determined expression had settled on his features. His eyes, the windows to his ever-evolving emotions, were empty pools of darkness, devoid of humanity, evil. It shook her to the core. Malice suffocated her, squeezing the breath from her lungs as it constricted her chest. She gasped as she struggled under the gravity of it. Darkness like venom pierced her heart, streaming steadily through her, devouring the light. These emotions were raw, sharp, and all-consuming. The most terrifying realization was that they did not belong to her. She didn't know how, but she knew this was him. She could feel his hatred. Instead of pushing it away, she let it in, finding the darkness to hate him in return. There was a dark chuckle as she did, and that snapped her from her thoughts. Her eyes opened to the familiar sight of the ventral turret of the falcon. She felt like a cloud had passed in front of the sun, and as quickly as it had appeared, it was gone. Her senses returned, the electric frequency of the force his frequency was gone. And she had spent countless hours before, she distracted herself by trying to reattach the two halves of her broken lightsaber. She released the broken crystals from the internal mechanism and rolled them over in her fingers dejectedly. A warm feeling radiated through her body as she caught a blue glow in the corner of her vision. She turned to see smiling, peaceful Luke, bathed in blue light. Luke? He chuckled. I thought you might need a little more guidance. She held out the two halves of this broken lightsaber to him. Kylo and I did this, she whispered. I thought I could save him. I thought I could bring him back to the light. But all I caused was more destruction. Luke smiled. In my defense, I told you it wouldn't turn out the way you hoped. His voice was light and peaceful, a tone she had never heard from him before. As grateful as she was to see him, there was still a part of her that was still disappointed in him. He should have been there to teach her and guide her through this connection to her enemy. He should have taken his lightsaber and come back with her. She needed him now more than ever. I know you died with peace and purpose, but why? She demanded. Her anger was simmering just below the first surface. Why didn't you help the resistance escape? Why did you have to face him? I think you did just fine, he said. There was a softness in his eyes she had never seen before. Ben needed me more. He needed to face me. 
It didn't escape her that he still referred to his nephew by his given name. It was only intended to give you time to help them. I knew I couldn't save him, and I wasn't foolish enough to believe I could turn him. But he needed to release the resentment he's been carrying with him without the weight of taking my life on his conscience. That's why I projected myself as I looked that night. Only I might have projected myself with my father's lightsaber instead of mine, he shrugged chuckling to himself. But the last time he saw it, I had it. So he must have thought... Luke continued, unaffected. He needed to understand that he aligned himself with the wrong side. The emperor, supreme leader, whatever he was, is dead. Nothing Ben wants is there. He needed to see that. Ray had thought she had known what he wanted, but she had been wrong. When I went to him on the supremacy, I tried to save him. You were right. It didn't go the way I hoped. I failed. He's gone. I'll tell you what I told my sister on that base, he said, blue eyes kind and sympathetic. No one's ever really gone, and I'm proof of that. But the most important lesson I ever learned was that failure is our greatest teacher. Look around you, Ray. Everyone failed. It is what you do in the wake of failure that is important. And besides, kid, it wasn't up to you to save him. The anger only escalated as she thought of all the ways she let him down. But you were right. I should have listened. I was so sure of everything. But he chose power. And now it's just getting worse. I'm so sorry. Luke was watching her more closely as if he could feel her anger and it concerned him. No, I should have told you the truth from the beginning. I should have done a lot of things from the beginning. Like confront you on your lies. I didn't. Luke raised his eyebrows, glaring at her knowingly. Blasters don't go off from cleaning them. Oh. Ray lowered her eyes, fidgeting with the hem of her grey tunic. Her only concern at the time was convincing him to go back to the resistance with her. She had feared that the strange force connection with his nephew would interfere with that. She had no idea it would become a permanent source of suffering. Most importantly, she hadn't kept the secret for nefarious reasons. She only hoped Luke understood that. I'm not blameless either, he said, interrupting her thoughts. I shouldn't have allowed you to believe the island was under attack. It wasn't about you, Ray. I was so consumed by my own failures that I let my emotions cloud my judgment. I hadn't seen my nephew since he collapsed his hut on us. So when I saw him in that hut with you, I reacted poorly. All I could see was how dangerous this force bond was for you. But I reacted in anger rather than helping you through this. Force bond? Yes, your energies in the force are bonded together. It's why you could see him, touch him, like he was in the room with you, he explained. But the softness in his eyes had disappeared. There was something he was searching for in her stare. You are both extremely force sensitive, and somehow that bond was created through the force. I had a bond with my sister and my father, but not even those were as strong as what is developing between you two. I have never seen or read anything like this, especially between two equals on opposite sides of the force. Her voice was urgent, pleading. Can I break this bond? Can you? Do you want to, Ray? Her anger flared. Of course I do. Or do you still believe I have too much darkness in me? He paused to study her. His piercing blue eyes bore through her defenses to read her like a book. It reminded her of a man that was dead to her more than the ghost before her. She supposed the proficiency of analyzing people was a Skywalker trait. Whatever he saw there, it didn't seem favorable for a clean break. After a moment, he continued. I have never heard of breaking a bond. It would take a strength more powerful than the force itself. You can shut yourself off from it permanently, but it would require shutting yourself off from the force. You could ignore him or block your mind from his. Maybe it would close the bond temporarily, but he would still be there. The only way to end it for good is death. But even if you survive it, there will always be a wound there his energy had been. Blue aura danced around him as he spoke, and as consequential as his words were, part of her was relieved to have an answer to something. There were so many unanswered questions that she feared would never be explained because the only person left to ask was her mortal enemy. 
But this has to end, she cried. I should have said something sooner. Maybe you could have helped me stop it. I was just so scared. And something in me was curious. I wanted to understand him because he understood me. Or at least I thought he did. But everything was a lie. Snoke said he created it. It should have ended with his death. But the bond is getting stronger, Luke. It started with only seeing him, but then today I saw his surroundings. I heard his thoughts, felt his feelings. I saw him without seeing him. What is this? Interesting, Luke replied. He sat quietly for a few moments, deep in thought. She didn't know if he was unsure what to tell her or was just as confused as she was, but she sat next to him until he spoke again. If he or Snoke isn't controlling it, it seems that the bond is growing stronger as you both interact. I would not try to use this to your advantage, Ray. This is playing with fire. My only advice is to resist it. I'm concerned about how strong and dangerous this bond could become for you. Snoke may have intensified this bond, but a force bond is created by the force. I think we must question why the force connected you two in the first place. I wish I had more answers for you, but the way of the Force are just as mysterious to me as anyone else. Please, you're the only one I can look to for answers. There must be something you can tell me, she begged. I can try to help you gain answers while I'm here with you. It would be too dangerous to do alone. Close your eyes and reach out with your feelings, he told her placing his hand over hers as he guided her through the force. She could not feel his touch as she had on Actu, but she could sense his energy. Think of him. Think of his force bond you share. What do you see? Ray closed her eyes and opened herself up to the force around her. Luke guided her deeper and she could feel the objects around her as if they were alive. She could feel Luke's bright blue aura and she could sense Leia in another part of the ship. She could feel everything in the universe all at once. She thought of Kylo. She thought of the moment their fingers touched. Where are you? She was catapulted through the stars, following a glowing, moving band of coils stretching across the galaxy. Living tendrils branched out from the band like a spiraling infestation of light. It ended in a dark, thick, storming shadow of evolving viscosity. She reached out and touched this shadow ever so gently and instantly recognized his familiar force signature. The shadow sent black, sticky webs snaking around her fingers like thin, slimy serpents. She ripped her hand away, but the black remnants disappeared inside her. She sensed from this touch that the shadow was the hurricane of emotions, thoughts and memories that she knew as Ben Solo or Kylo Ren. She did not know how, but somehow she knew that if she followed the glowing band into his shadow, she would have access to everything. What would I see? How could I use it to my advantage, to the advantage of the resistance? What if he caught me? Could he do the same to me? Luke is right. Whatever this is, it feels dangerous. I don't want to go in there. I don't want to see him. Backing away, Ray followed her glowing band back through the stars. She shook feverishly as she entered her own consciousness again. As she opened her eyes, she was aware of the same presence she had just touched. A shadow. The dark, vicious cloud she had felt was no longer across the galaxy. It was lingering in the back of her mind. She could feel their bond now. Can he feel me? Will this go away? Luke, I saw him. I found him. And now I can feel his energy as if it is part of me. What does this all mean? She asked Luke, desperate for more answers. When she turned to him, however, she found an empty turret. Even though I know you're with me, Luke, why do I feel so alone?